In this video, I'm going to be doing an overview of the Ray 3D N2 Plus, and this is pretty much the same as the N2. Right, so to go over the main features, you've got a build area of 305 by 305 by 610, uh, which is pretty big, um, and you can see that you've got this nice sturdy um, build, build plate. And this is pre-leveled in the factory, so you won't need to ever do that, um, which, is, which is really good. You can see it's mounted from both sides, so it's never really going to get thrown out. There is the possibility to adjust this. It's, it's quite complicated, though, because there, there are quite a few screws underneath. Um, so if you need to do that, you can. One of the main features of this printer is that you've got dual extrusion, and the filament feeds from the side here, which is nice and easy to get to. Um, usually most printers have, it mount, have the spools mounted on the back, which is a bit of a pain. Um, so these just clip on here and then feed through into the top of the extruder. You've just got these doors that shut. Um, you get a really nice interactive screen and it's got its own internal memory so it will store prints on here. You can just scroll through and select, select the ones you want. Everything, everything's really nicely displayed on there and makes it really easy to use. And you can print via Idea Maker, which is the slicing software. You can do this wirelessly and also send files to the printer to store, which is a really nice feature. Um, not many other printers have that. You get this um, removable lid, which is just... Um, advised for printing in ABS and high temperature materials. When you're printing in PLA, you won't want this fitted. So you can just store it. And then taking a closer look at the print head, you can see you get this nice perspex front so you can see everything that's going on. So um, this is excellent. Just, just make sure that when you're loading, loading material, you can see exactly where it is. If it's getting caught on the extruder, um, on the motor even, you're going to see that um, and be able to sort it out. The nozzles sit next to each other and again these are, these are nice and easily accessible so if you ever want to change these over it's just a case of unscrewing them and screwing on a new one. Next thing is probably to show you how we set up a file and load some filament into it. Okay so we'll load up some filament first and just go into utilities on the screen and we'll load both, both extruders. So start by loading the left. You see it start to heat up. So you just open this side door and then slot your spool on. Feed it through this little tube. And you just want to make sure it goes all the way down to the feeder motor. You can see that it's ready. And then click load. And then you'll see it start to feed down. And then you just want to wait for it to start extruding from the nozzle and let a little bit run out. And there you go, you can see it's coming out from the extruder. And then we just press OK. And now we'll do the exact same for the right nozzle. Right, so once it's ready, you get the load button come up again and um, we'll just slot our new spool on. You can see we're using a colour fab spool here. Um, another good thing about this printer is that you're not restricted with materials, so you can print, print with any brand, that's fine. And just feed, so feed your material through again until it's at the, at the motor and click load and just give it a little bit of help so it grips and then once it's got it you can just let it, let it do its thing and wait for the filament to extrude again okay and then you can see that the filament's coming out and just let it, let it purge slightly and then once you're ready, just click OK. And we're ready to create a print file. 
Okay, so to set a print off, we're just going to start by going into Idea Maker, which is the print software. And it's literally as easy as just dropping in an STL file, like so. And then you can see your model. You can just drag around and check that it's okay using the right click on your mouse. Or if you hold down the control key and left click, you can uh, maneuver around and see a bit further. You can also sort of zoom in and out as well. As it's quite a big build area. You can see here on the left, you've got uh, model info comes up straight away. You can just select the extruder that you want to print with. Obvious choice between left and right, depending on which one you want to use. So left, and then you can assign a color to it depending on which colour you want to print with. Um, this doesn't actually have any effect on the print, but it just makes it easier in the, uh, in the print software to see what's going on. And then once you're happy, you just click OK, and then cross that. So a few other options as well. Um, if, you, if you want to sort of manually select these tools for manoeuvring the, the print around, you can. So you can just sort of drag it by hand using your mouse, or use these controls um, and do it by specific increments. You can rotate your model, again, just by clicking and dragging on the model in different axes, or you can adjust it more accurately using these controls. Also, you can scale, so we can scale this model up and make it, make it a nice big, big file to test out the printer. And it's quite a good file actually because it there's a lot of quite tricky overhangs um, which we're going to try and print without supports. Sometimes you'd probably want to put supports in or use dissolvable supports if you want to get the best finish, but um, this printer copes pretty well. And if you want to add support, you literally just click on this support option and you have all these uh, different different options here that will be shown and then you literally just go create auto supports and it'll drop in all the support structure for you where it thinks it needs it. Again you can adjust where this comes in if you want to and you want to really fine tune it. You can delete and add supports as you want like this. Uh, we're actually going to just clear all of these supports and print without. There's this option here for max fit you can make the model as big as possible and it will scale it up to a point at which is the biggest that it can do. This is absolutely massive so we'll probably scale it down a little bit from that just like so and it will automatically drop down onto the bed. You see once you've clicked off the model it will show up in the, in the correct colour that you've selected. Uh, duplicate, just duplicate the model so you can have two of them and obviously reset will just reset back to the original settings that you've, that you've chosen. And once you're sort of happy to go ahead and print, and this looks pretty good, so you'll then just go start. Then you've given this window which allows you to select the correct material. You want to firstly check that you've got the the right printer selected, so the Raise 3D N2 Plus with a V2 hot end, that's the right one. As you see you have all these other options for Raise printers. And then we're going to print with the left extruder and in PLA, we've got PLA in both so that looks absolutely fine, we'll leave it as it is. And when you're starting out you just get these three options for high quality standard and a fast print which is labelled as speed. To start with, these are quite useful just for getting prints going. You can go in and really fine tune, change the infill density, select the type of platform addition you want, and then even further in the advanced settings, go into fine detail on each extruder, the support, platform additions, and cooling. There's loads of other different settings, so it's quite nice that you can do that. So if you make any changes, just remember to save and close, but we haven't, so we'll just close without saving, and we'll select 
standard quality. And then once you're ready, just select Slice. This will prepare the model to be printed. It takes a little while depending on how good your computer is and also the complexity of the, the print file. So once that's ready, you get this little window that comes up and gives you an estimated print time. Also gives you an estimate on the cost and the amount of material that it's going to use. Once you're pleased with that, you can preview it or upload it or export it. So we're actually going to upload this one. And this will upload directly to our printer. Choose a name. So we'll just call it test print and then upload. You can see now on the left this is synced with our printer and is now uploading it to its internal memory and we'll just wait for that to load up and then we'll be able to print remotely from the, from the computer. Okay so now the upload's completed we can close this window and then connect so now we're directly connected and if we click print and look onto local storage, here's our file, test print. Click on it, select, make sure it's the right one and then we'll just click print and it'll begin. This menu here is particularly useful so you can monitor it while you're away from the printer. You can see that our left nozzle is heating up currently tells us how much time we've got left and you can see a live um, representation of, of how far through the print has got. So this, this greyed out image here will slowly start to fill up. You can also pause the print and stop it using this control here. Okay, so that's, that's the Raise 3D N2 Plus, and um, the N2, which I mentioned earlier, is essentially the exact same machine. It just has a slightly reduced build volume. So that one is 305 by 305 by 305 mil, um, whereas this one, you get 610 mil in the Z-axis. And this is our print that we've just done. So you can see we, this, is, this is a nice big, big file. And we can actually go quite a bit bigger than this, but the detail is produced and like where it's coped with these overhangs um, is really impressive. Just before I go, I'll run you through everything that you get inside the box. So this is everything that comes in the box besides the printer itself. Um, you get two spools of premium PLA, a scraper for removing your prints from the bed, some tweezers, which are useful for removing any little bits of filament that might get caught around the nozzle. You get a set of Allen keys, a quick start guide, uh, this little gauge for setting the distance between the nozzle and the bed. You get a USB stick, it's for saving files on if you don't want to save directly to the memory. And then you get this little bag of spares, uh, which contains some fuses, some spare screws, and uh, a few other little bits of tubing and things, which is really useful. Uh, you get some cool stickers and these two rods for uh, unblocking the nozzle if you ever need to. If you want any more information about this, feel free to call up our showroom, drop in, visit our website. And if you want to buy one and you're watching this on YouTube, you can click in the link in the description below. Make sure to like our YouTube channel and subscribe as well. If you enjoyed this video, please like, comment and subscribe. Also, come follow us on Facebook, Twitter and Instagram. You can find out more about our products and services by visiting dream3d.co.uk.